everybody. Welcome back to Opria's Open Mind. The Oom Season 2. Let's go, everybody. Season 2, Episode 1. We have, you guys know, I love her. You listen to oh, her already. Thank you, guys. This is Dr. Pascal. Thank you, guys. I'm so glad y'all have me back. I had so much fun doing this with y'all last year. And great questions. Great uh, well, we response. We have a ton of questions. Just great. I love what you're doing is educating women <laughs> and letting them take control of their own health. You can ask questions and you can challenge your doctors and know what what's going on. All right. So last year we did. It's weird to say last year. We'll recap. It was a we'll month recap. ago. Like last season. Ago. Oh, we are. Last, last, season. last season of season. Oprah's Open yeah. Mic. So last season's Oprah Open Mic, we did an episode with Dr. Pasco and we dove into the weight gain and perimenopause and men- menopause. In this episode, we're diving into the hormone side of perimenopause and menopause. There's a lot of really good questions for you. Um, but recapping the weight gain. Because there's going to be people Mm -hmm. that are like, I just can't understand this spare tire that I'm getting. We hit on the weight loss shots on the last episode. And you think they're good if they are used correctly and not abused. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, what what I'm seeing is, I mean, I've, I've actually used these weight loss shots with patients when they first came out 2015 or so. And, and I learned a lot about it. And basically these are peptides that you once had when you were younger. But what I've been reading now is our diets have changed with inflammation that decreases some of this. And these peptides, they're ghrelin and leptin. That's what the shots are made out of. They were able to isolate that are so important as we get older. And behold and lo and behold, when you hit menopause, that change in hormone changes that balance. And it's so in not, your gut health? In your gut health, the gut health. We always knew gut had a lot to do with it. Gut health controls the brain. Gut health also, it's like the um, the railway station that the exchanges are going on, what's coming in, what's going out. And it controls the liver, controls the, uh, the hormones at the fat cells. And it's the ovary that triggers all of that. Better so the gut system, health means we can drink more. Oh, well, well, right? you so then the liver, not, the liver, yeah, the not, liver not. starts functioning better. Are these hormones available for men? <laughs> well, you know I mean? it's like, not a hormone. It's a peptide. Oh, peptides. Yeah, are yeah. peptides available for men? Of course right? they are. Yeah, so I can, of course they are. Yeah. All right. So I have one quick question before we dive into the hormones on mm-hmm. that. So you're not saying go do the shot. You're saying if you are a candidate, it is a good tool if used correctly and you Absolutely. have doctor supervision and you're Absolutely. not just like taking it and eating whatever you want. You have to make sure you're in taking enough protein. And that is a problem that I see on people that have done it. They drop their, they're not hungry, so they just don't eat and they don't intake enough protein. And then your body's going to eat. And whether you feed or not, it's going to eat your muscle. And then you're going to get right. very disproportionately um, lean that you lean, don't want but it's not a good lean it's not it's not it looks a unhealthy. pretty muscle mean uh, yeah lean, yeah and that's why you did that challenge that's why we're in the we middle of the protein right. challenge yeah. stronger and, and, for longer protein and Aaron, challenge and Aaron's pretty challenge muscles. is great because what what we're saying is if you consume over 100 grams of protein a day you're going to be full you're going to have good health you're going to have the right nutrition you're not going to have much room for carbs the, yeah, that's that not is, adding 100 grams of protein on top of the carbs you would normally eat. You have eat. to drop one the to balance up the of other. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we did talk about on this. So we're kind of recapping real quick. We did talk about on the last episode that as we start getting older, we start hitting perimenopause and menopause. What happens with our body being able to process the carbs the same or fat cells? What happens with all that? Well, w- when the hormone changes, okay, and the first one that starts going uh, off. That's why a lot of these questions are coming. I'm estrogen dominant. The progesterone drops. Progesterone is what you need to help your sleep cycle regulate. So I'll hear women come in. I'm not sleeping. The sleep cycle will will trigger off moods because a lot of your balancing, they're called neurotransmitter, not hormones because they're in your brain, neuro brain stuff. It changes that. Okay. So you might be more anxious, maybe some borderline depression starts coming in. So when those hormone changes, the progesterone is the first thing, the body is sensing something's happening, okay? Estrogen starts going up, okay? And it's like, hmm, we, we got to start looking for 
storehouses for the estrogen. So where it can make extra estrogen is fat cells because those are the cells it once knew when you were pregnant. So it goes back to that same system. The body has memory. It will remember, oh, when you were pregnant, we needed extra estrogen besides the ovary and the placenta. So we're going to make it in the fat cells. So, so what's that do to fat cells then? Because people are like, okay, so there's estrogen in my fat cells. What's that mean? Well, the estrogen in your fat cells, okay, the fat cells turn into estrogen. It's a weak estrogen, which is needed for your bone health, for cardiovascular health, for brain fogginess, brain health. So you need that. So estrogen overall has so many functions that it does in the body. And if you don't have any estrogen coming in, your bones are going to get thinner. Osteoporosis, vertebrate or discs are getting misaligned, joint pain. And so you had some questions like, I'm having joint pain. Is this normal in menopause? Yes, it is. But what when you're talking about the fat cells, mm-hmm. do fat cells change and make you gain more weight? Is that what you're no, saying? No, no, no. What happens? Okay. So the fat cells, the the signal to the fat cells, it's an insulin receptor. And that becomes downregulated. So all the carbs that you would normally take in that you would metabolize does not metabolize. It goes to storage of fat. So that's why people say what I've always did, done doesn't work anymore. It doesn't work anymore. And the fat distribution like is like— you're becoming a, a whole different person. Right. You become like a— Like, like your attitude changes. Your sleep changes. Your, well, your well, weight changes. It's like, it's like your brain health changes. You're literally shifting into a different person. Everything changes. And must drive people crazy. It's not in your head. And unfortunately, the medical world has not that's addressed this. Why do, why do doctors ignore this? Why do they ignore well, it? Well, I think we haven't been taught— to, to look, we've sort of chunked menopause and years ago when a hysterectomy is, oh, just have a hysterectomy. They didn't even think that testosterone was applicable for women. And it was only because of my pharmacy background, I was listening to women and checking their numbers and, and then just trying stuff. And there was definitely change. And I'm like, okay, there's like a, uh, a black box in the textbooks. They never address it. And unfortunately, because we didn't have a lot of women in female health and OBGYN. It was mainly doctors or men Man. that did all the research. And, and so they ignored all of this with women. Because I even have, I have clients now. I get so many DMs of my, I've gone to my doctor and they're saying everything's fine. But they, they don't look at the big picture. They, they might look at one thing. They Why don't teach that? this. in med- One of the reasons is because medicine has been compartmentalized. If you need a heart doctor, well, uh, the OBGYN can't deal with your heart. Well, the heart's important because when your estrogen starts going down, your LDL, your good, your good cholesterol starts going down, and you need that as a protective factor for your for your cardiac system. So it does go together. I can't like I don't want to hear anything about the heart because it doesn't involve me. I don't want to hear anything about the brain. I don't want to hear anything about depression yeah. because. It all. You got those questions. I'll set you up with a, another doctor. But yes, day. but you think it all kind of works together. It so absolutely you like does. hearing those questions. I you love, personally, because you feel like you can pull out, look at all the panels, and start figuring out. Well, your brain health could be coming from X Y Z, and your heart could well, be coming from X Y Z when you start really right, diving so when, into it. When I start doing this, Aaron, and I look, I do a full panel. Okay, so I want to see where's your thyroid. Is that going off to with your female and everything's getting confused and with your weight going up, what's your cholesterol? Are you having cardiac issues also? So I check everything because only by doing that, then you can tease out what's really wrong and what's not. And sometimes all of it goes, you know, it's all sort of crashing at the same time. We have to put back all the systems one by one. I feel like women, we are a puzzle piece. Yes. And it's not one thing fits all because everybody's body Absolutely. is, I feel like the you menopause. Sure? It's and not like 10,000 steps a day in a balanced act. Yeah, I that's it. Like... That's all it is. <laughs> no, and, and I think, it's... All, right. And I think some women may have insomnia. Some women have hot flashes. Some women, they have more of the weight gain. Some women may have vaginal dryness. Some may not have any problems with libido. Others are like, I have no interest in sex. Me. <laughs> and, yeah, and it it just just varies. So, so you really have to get a. But you weren't even good, premenopause when that popped. Yeah, so. a good history, <laughs> good history. Figure out and listen to all of it from head down. Joint pain. I know. Yeah. I 
I don't have that. There's some a lot of things I have and a lot of things I don't have. It's really fun. So right. she she did. So there's a lot of questions about testosterone okay. Okay. because okay. you've Good. seen me. Yes. You guys have seen me talk about on my story that I do a testosterone. <laughs> and no, I'm not trying to transition. Those that wanted to ask me if I'm tra- trying to be a male. I'm not trying to be a male. I was prescribed testosterone through my doctor, Dr. Pascal. Right. And the reason for that, because mine was a three when you did my full That's panel. Right. And that was a shocker because the three did not match my body. But no, I was no. like, you sure you didn't well, give people blood an blood idea what a three means. What's a three mean? I, I, that's a testosterone level of three. A testosterone level of three. In a woman. Three nanogram in wom- a woman. It should be at least 20 to 60. So the goal for it me is to be around therapeutic, right? Yeah, I want to be like around fifty. That's kind of my goal. Exactly, exactly. And you've gone up slowly, so your body's responded. Yeah, you, I mean, you were doing great without it. You needed some more, but like right. you still had you, muscle tone. You still had you right, some which energy. is a shocker. Yeah, but you've done that not through testosterone, just through grit and yeah. working <laughs> out. Okay, <laughs> you didn't have any. Uh, performance enhancing drugs to get those muscles. Yeah, you just, yeah, you don't need any of these pills or right. doctor visits. You need stubbornness and that's the, right. the and ability to be grit. an uncompromising bitch. You but, know, what I mean? like that's really, that's right. really just really impressed. Getting yeah. up at five in the morning to work out till ten. Yeah, that's what you get when you do that. Okay. All right. So my testosterone was low, and a lot of people are going to say, "Why didn't you do the pellet?" What is your belief on the pellet? My belief in the pellet is that uh, first of all, it's Number one, it's not FDA approved, but it's, and some people may say, oh, I don't really care about FDA, but here's the deal. It, you cannot control the dose and the pellet, it has to be a fat soluble. So once that pellet, it, the hormone starts leaching out of the pellet, it will stick in your fat cells and it will be there for a longer time than you think. Like up to five years, right? Up to five years. That's correct. And if you're all of a sudden you realize, holy cow, my testosterone is way too high. You cannot reverse that. It is what it is. You can't just call it out. You can't just stop it. Okay. So if you're gaining weight from testosterone, correct. if you're getting facial hair or what other symptoms? Um, you could have a deeper voice. Um, bone depth is a little bit thicker. And some women have had enlarged clitoris. So there sounds like a good thing. It can't well, be. it's not. <laughs> it's, it, 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 wait, no, that's it's a... enlarged, but it's not more um, sensitive. Oh, oh, that's not. Yeah, pretty. there's like, yeah, like, oh, you have big, beautiful eyes. Well, there's a point at which those eyes get a little too big, and maybe you look like <laughs> a bug. Right. Okay, like, I have an appendage, like, appendage growing out. Yeah, yeah, the Do clitoris is pe- become like, a penis? like, yeah, a finger. Well, you know, you may be. All right, so the bottom line is— And you can't is, change that either. You yeah, need because I, to I have a that. friend that did did it, and everyone's like, oh, you get great sex drive. And I was like, you know what? I'm not okay with the other symptoms. There's other ways for sex drive. But so I decided to go—we decided, for me, the best route is to go the slow and steady route. I went with the cream. I do yeah, the I'm smallest really dose. And I, I'm really glad I did it. The smallest dose. It's mm-hmm. about five weeks. It went from a three to a 29. My goal is to get in the 50s. I'm probably getting. You're halfway there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm probably getting closer. It's been a little bit since I had those done. And so that is the testosterone. A lot of people, where do you get it? You need to get through a prescription. Right. You, need, you, need, you need a physician to write it. It is a controlled substance. And the reason being, because a lot of the bodybuilders uh, use it inappropriately back in the 80s. So the DEA decided to control it. So you get. A prescription and five refills. So, a physician, can I start using it and get better gains in the gym? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Someone... Yeah. She said, yeah. <laughs> so, they said a uh, question that I get a lot too is why are you putting it behind your knee, not in your armpit or in your vagina? Well, you don't want to grow hair. So, you, it's because you can, we call it hirsutism, you can grow hair in those areas. So, you don't have hair follicles behind your knees. Oh, so that's why that's behind your knee. Mm-hmm. So why they say it's unsafe? To, some people have said it's unsafe to put it behind your knee. It's not unsafe. I was okay. like, even the pharmacist right. told me no. to put it behind my knee, too. It's right. It's not unsafe. You, you don't want to grow more hair under your armpits, right? No. <laughs> okay. All right. That makes sense. There we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Does, I didn't know there Here is a question. Does uh, estrol, estradiol help your mood? Yeah, it can. It, it can, but uh-huh. well, there's a full panel, so it's not like right. well, it's just, just it's because not that just the goes. Estradiol. You have to look at everything. So again, you know, are, are your moods better when your hormones are balanced? Yes. Yes, there's. It's like a puzzle piece. This has to mm-hmm. go up, and this has to be right, right, right. and this has to be right. And right. your energy, testosterone, does give you energy, but it's not. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, even even with you, you were taking the Addy that that 
the drug to help with your sex drive, but it wasn't going to be effective unless your testosterone had increased a little bit. And you had talked right. about and that. Right, and that's what I tell you. And so you have right. to get these things in balance. That's incredible. What right. what does that that drug do? Sex drug? No, no, no. Sorry, the one that they asked Addy? about. No, est- estradiol. Estradiol. Estradiol is what your ovaries make, and that's what helps your female cycle. Okay. How would that yeah. affect your mood? It, right, I mean, like make you well, make it a better cy- mood. Your cycle affects your mood. Yeah, your but you don't, ma- or not in a good mood when <laughs> no, it starts making cycle, that stuff. Right, like when women. Okay, okay, so let's put it this way: a lot of women get a little moodier right before their no. period. Okay, because the Get estrogen's me. really high, the progesterone's really high, so it's a little bit higher than usual. Then they have their period, then those levels come back down to normal. Okay, so too high can make you moody. Oh, uh, okay. Too low can make you moody. And the oh, thing with estrogen, okay. yes, you it need, just you generally need, affects right. your mood. Yeah. You need to find an even okay. kill area. Yes. So if you are low, right. that might be something. Right. And that your might body be does that if you if you have different moods throughout the month, it's because your hormones are changing throughout the month. And those hormones can affect your mental health and sometimes to a greater degree, just depending what else is going on. Like yeah. if you don't have vitamin D around and you don't have good nutrition, then you may see a more profound effect on your moods. I was about to say, like th- there's a natural swing that's healthy anyway. Like, right. you know what I mean? It's right. like you have a mood in a month. Wow. You need some drugs. <laughs> uh, no, right? Like right. you need to eat healthy. You're right. going to have some swings right. one way right. or the other, right. but maybe go get a full panel from Dr. A full Dr. panel Pascal. and see what's going on. If you have hypothyroidism, you may have uh, borderline depression or melancholy. And Melancholy? What's that? Well, it's an old term they use for like, you're not really depressed, but you're just not, you know, your moods are a little bit more down. Oh. Mm-hmm. All right. Like you on cloudy days. <laughs> I love the sunshine. All right. Does menopause cause swollen joints and pain? Yes, it yes, can. Yes, it can. Not yes. for everybody. It can be a symptom for random people, yeah. right? Oh, that yes. was your lucky one. Yes. You're lucky. Yes, yes. All right. Um, what What to do starting HRT is, oh, what to do if HRT is causing weight gain and I'm not overeating calories. Also, okay, you might not be overeating calories, but are you intaking too many carbs as you're starting to hit the perimenopause, right. menopause, when your body can't process them the same? you got to change your diet. Remember what you've always done. You can't do. You can't you do can't anymore. Do. So we, what, we know that too, right? So is, HRT, can it be causing weight gain? It can. It, it, well, the weight gain that you get with HRT is more fluid weight. So the estrogen actually helps with moisture and it helps integrity of the cells, okay? So when you add it back, all of a sudden your body wants to hold on to water. And so it may be water weight that you're actually looking at. So you have to look at the whole picture and see, is this, what, what kind of weight am I getting? Yeah. What would you do with the water retention? If they're retaining water, what what's... Well, you can drink you can drink more water because the more water you drink, it sort of pushes... Flushes it out. Yes. Yes, that would be the Go first Go into thing. a sauna. Yeah. But into... also, if you're going into a sauna, you've got to freaking massively hydrate too. Don't just go try to sweat it out and not rehydrate it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, thoughts on using synthetic estradiol cream okay. on, li- on libido? Lib- for libido. Yeah. Okay. For, for absorption. So... Here's the deal with synthetic estradiol. Um, most of y'all are maybe or may not be aware, but this is the reason why people had a negative connotation about hormones. There were synthetic hormones that were used for a huge study in 2001. It's called the WHI study, and that's what everything's compared to. And what they did find out that synthetic had slightly more, not a lot more, but slightly um, a higher risk of... Uh, uh, thrombophilia, which is blood clots and breast cancer. Now, that argument is going back and forth, back and forth, but you don't have to use synthetic. There are safer ones that we have seen that are safer, which are plant-based, and you might know them as bioidentical, okay? So it means it's the same molecule that's coming out of your ovary. That's what's called bioidentical, and they the source they get this from is plant, soy plant mainly. Do you, think, uh, do you feel like soy causes breast cancer? Yeah, I mean, it's estradiol. How much soy are you consuming? Would you have to consume a lot, do you think, mm-hmm. for it to do it? Mm-hmm. But eating it once a week, fine. Mm-mm. Eating it daily? Um, Bad? I don't, I mean, but I, just I, asking I, I for... I don't think, I mean, it, it's a plant base, and it's your, your my, my answer is going to be, I don't think so. 
But would your answer but be more moderation is always better? Moderation is always better. And if you do have breast cancer already that's diagnosed, that's estrogen receptor positive, then I would stay away from estrogen containing products. That would be soy. That would be soy. That's correct. There we go. All right. Perimenopausal, 53 years old. Okay. No symptoms, still bleeding. Need HRT now or should she wait? If she has no symptoms, I would wait if you're still bleeding. The average age, average, 50% of women will go through menopause. That is their or, um, one year of amenorrhea at age 50 to 51. Some women will bleed all the way to 55. I've even seen some women all the way to 58, 59. And it's really dependent on your genetics. Whenever your mom went through menopause, <laughs> naturally. It's hard to know mine because my mom had a hysterectomy at like 30. Right. And that's so the I answer no I get for a yeah. lot of them. But, you know, they were like, my parents, didn't, my mom didn't talk about it. My aunts didn't talk about it. I don't know. So then the answer is you're going to find out as you go through it. Now, she can yeah, have a give, simple yeah, give, lab give test done. Uh, and it's follicle stimulating hormone. It's FSH. It's what stimulates the ovary to produce estradiol. And that one simple blood test can tell you, where are you? Are you about to go into menopause in the next couple of years? Um, and another one is anti-mullerian hormone that we use for fertility. But that can tell you, you know, am I still fertile at 49? When that number starts dropping and the FSH starts going up, you know that menopause is going to be happening probably within the next year. So those are other lab markers that can help you. All right. Been on the pill for 30 years, probably wow. in perimenopause. But how do I know? Well, there's a there's a panel like on the panel because when you did my test. Right. You you can get blood work um, to see where where you are. Um, the antimullerian hormone is another one. And if it's low, you're probably getting ready to hit menopause. So FSH and the antimullerian hormone actually if that AMH, antimullerian hormone, is low, you're not going to get pregnant, <laughs> okay? If the FSH is 15, Let you're not going to get pregnant. <laughs> if it's over 20, you can stop the pill. Now, the American College of OBGYN has recommended some women will stay on a low-dose birth control that's used as hormone replacement in their early 50s. Do you find that to be effective? Oh, Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're getting a higher dose of hormone, not very high, but most birth controls are 20 micrograms to 30 micrograms. The lowest dose is a 10 microgram. Hormone replacement is one microgram. So do you think it's best to just do the low dose of birth control? I think I think you can, early 50s, if you're still, I mean, active, you're still sexually active, it's going to provide great vaginal moisture. Um Depending that nothing else changes, like there's no cardiac risk factors, nothing else changes in your life. Your weight's normal. Okay. That is, so there's a lot of sex questions. Like mm -hmm. what, what do we do if you're dry? Like what's the best thing mm -hmm. for dryness? Um, if you're dry, what's your age? That's what I want let's, to know. Let's just guess that someone's like 55 and they're dry. Okay. Well, I'm going to ask, um, did you go through menopause? If the answer is Yes. What's your feelings about hormone replacement? What's your risk factors of doing hormone replacement? Um, we always can do a vaginal estrogen. It does not get absorbed. Say if you're worried about breast cancer. Vaginal estrogen is not, you're not going to absorb hardly any into the blood system to cause breast cancer. I have to tell patients this all the time. It is such a low dose. There's also a, um, there's several products. There's several vaginal estrogen. There's a vaginal ring you can put in there. There's vaginal suppositories. Um, there's the uh, vaginal rejuvenation. What do you find to be the absolute best? If you said, I would do X, Y, Z, what would it be? <laughs> oh, well, I hope my Vagifem reps don't get mad at me. But um, the one that I found very, very helpful, it's Intrarosa. It's a pre-testosterone suppository, and I've treated women. They were dry as the Sahara Desert. They were <laughs> awfully painful. I mean, it is. Yeah. It's really, really, really sad when, you know, doing an exam, it is so incredibly Hard. painful. And I can't imagine women having sex with that. And They I, just rip, right? Just things, a little tear. And, and a little tear is awful because then it doesn't heal real 
it's, you know, it, it takes a long time to heal. And every time you urinate, it's like acid on that. Uh, yikes. Yikes. I yikes. know, man, do you feel, <laughs> not that they're looking, but you get to realize why is this so painful for women? But with the interosa, I have seen all of that come back. There are That's other mm-hmm. areas that might be more, you know, flesh with. So fluid. women, you if, it, if have you have vaginal. vaginal dryness, you know what? You need to, if your doctor's not addressing it, find somebody that will. Because there is help. And I mean, this is a really important part of of overall well-being and wellness. Yeah, we don't have to be miserable. The mm-hmm. horror stories that we hear and heard e- about menopause and, and parent right, menopause don't even, have to be. Right. And even if you're not sexually active, some of them are like, well, I'm, I said, you know, it's really important that things aren't really dry down there because you can increase your risk for bladder infections if yes. And mm-hmm. I mean, older women in their 70s and 80s, they will get septic from a bladder infection. That's crazy mm-hmm. and scary. All yes. right. Ways to help regulate hormone postpartum. While breastfeeding. Well, you, re- okay. Jeez. That's. It's a lot going yeah, on. Yeah, that's <laughs> a lot. Okay. Postpartum, wh- you're not going to regulate your hormones while you're breastfeeding. Why? Because the whole axis of breastfeeding is to stop you from ovulating. Okay. That's how the system works. Wow. Um, and you need, do you need all that to pre- produce milk? Yes. Oh. So sorry, buddy. You know, <laughs> that sucks. every now and then somebody can, will will ovulate if they're intermittently breastfeeding. But if you're solely breastfeeding, the hormones are going to be off. So you're going to have to decide. All right. Optimal, optimal estrogen levels for women on HRT. Like what would be your goal number for them to hit? Let's say 150, between 100 and 150. I wouldn't go over 200. You know, just because you're worried. And and the deal is, what's the minimal level? I wouldn't really go at a number. What is the minimal level that you feel good? I think that's the bottom line on everything. Mm -hmm. Like even the testosterone, there is such wide ranges of numbers. That's exactly what I, right. Like I had a client that had hers done and I think her number was like 15 or 17. And the doctor said, oh, you're fine. Nothing. But that's not actually true. It could be true, but it might not be true. Her levels might have been 60 most of her life. So a drop down to 15. Is- Wait, do you have more? Do you have women have more testosterone than they have estrogen, correct? They have the potential to produce more. And especially at menopause, because you're not making the estrogen. So the other hormone that the ovaries will make is testosterone. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's I find I just learned that it's recently. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that's really yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um. Where is a good place to get your hormones checked? Any lab. And if you don't have a place, our office is actually now uh, offering from Aaron's show. We had so many phone calls <laughs> around, the, around the country that we can do a lab course set up. We can do a telehealth with you and get your labs checked. Um, send it to me. Well, yeah, what, what, what's your phone number? Do you know it? Off, off yeah, 615 790 4140. 615-790-4140. And so, we are offering telehealth because we've had lots of questions. Um, some of the patients call me and say, my doctor won't do this. I'm like, you know what? So we started doing this uh, actually since we started the podcast with you. Yeah. Yeah. So you do. So LabCorp that mm-hmm. you can sometimes LabCorp can come to your house. Sometimes you can go to LabCorp in most every place. Most every place. If you're in a rural to. city, that is a question on here. If you're in a rural city, what do they do? They have to go somewhere to get their blood there, work. There's some place. Usually the hospitals will have it. So an yeah, ER. Usually somebody has like right. to go to the city. New right. city kind of thing. Do, do a doctor. So insurance will cover those as yes. long as a doctor calls it in. So yes. that's why it'd be good to do it. Telehealth is that yes. the doctor calls that in and right. they cover your blood <laughs> right. work. The blood work will be covered. It's a consultation and that will be covered by insurance. And we can do a profile and decide what needs to be checked send the order to wherever. And that's, because it's not just one thing. It's a huge panel. And it's right. like, well, this could be low, but this is low because this is high. And this is high because this is this. Right. And she really, when I had mine done, really dove into all these numbers right. to try to figure it out. And then you adjust this thing and then you have it done again and you see what needs right. to and, move. Right. And the thing about it is I think menopause is sort of like a, a period stop and it's just a marker that... You know, well, we know one thing has changed, but just age itself, I mean, a lot of things start, start 
being unbalanced. Yes. Right. And so it's a good time to just do a checkup with everything, thyroid, your cholesterol. And we do know that estrogen has an impact on all of that. And it's not just your period. Estrogen affects brain health, gut health, uh, bones, vaginal health. So, you know, there are a lot of benefits to estrogen. But we also have to make sure that you know, you know the risk factors. We do a great screening on you and get you back to where you feel great. Here's a good question. My doctor said I cannot do hormone replacement because I have family history of breast cancer. Other options? You do have one for this. We've talked about this. This yes, is really yes. And you know the the family. There are other options. There are um, so there are serums. There are selective estrogen receptor modulators. Um, the the thing to know is if there's a family history, what was it also? You need to know, was it estrogen progesterone positive? Okay. And you're asking about estrogen, but there are a lot of different, I mean, if, if you want to go on hormones, the best thing to do is to get a full workup, get, a, get a, a panel, get a good history, see what type of cancer your family members had. And there are great options out there. There are, we call them selective estrogen receptor modulator. So they're giving you estrogen, but blocking the breast. That's the one I remember us talking about. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what it was called, but I knew there was something that we <laughs> talked about. That stuff actually, was... tamoxifen is that. Wait, what is tamoxifen? Tamoxifen is a drug that they use for um, breast cancer that are estrogen receptive positive, And you can block the estrogen after they've done treatments. Oh, uh -huh. But there are a lot of other ones like um, Clomid is also an, a, a serum, uh, Roloxifene is a serum. So hmm. the, God, there's yeah. so many questions right here. I wish I could get through all of them. But we are, let's, let's do one more. Best way to find a doctor in our area that will do these panels. Where If somebody is wants to go somewhere local in their area, what are they looking for in a doctor? Are they looking to go to... A, a, their gynecologist. a gynecologist should be well versed in this. Um, some internal medicine doctors will do this. A family practice doctor, some of them also are comfortable doing hormones. So those are the doctors that I would look at. What do they need to ask for as far as panel goes? Um, I think you need a complete metabolic profile. So you need liver, kidneys, um, electrolytes. Um, I, I would go ahead and do a cholesterol panel your total cholesterol, triglyceride, HDL, and LDL, because that tells you if, if there are things like metabolic syndrome that's starting to come on, which is the name we give the insulin resistance, I would get your female hormones, FSH, LH, estradiol, uh, progesterone, a full testosterone, vitamin B1, B6, uh, D, um, what else? Um, how much, of, how much of this, like maybe your numbers are off? How much of that can be controlled by, say, diet without more drugs? Most I, like, of it. Right? Because I, I, like, you, you do this whole panel mm -hmm. and say their cholesterol is high. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't automatically put them on cholesterol yeah, medicine. You want to do everything you can to stay I've off heard, medicine. Speaking of cholesterol, actually, I want to hit on that. Have you heard the horror stories of cholesterol, the statin drug? Yes. Do you believe that? I don't know if that's true. Well, the early statins, they would cause uh, myalgias, like muscle, the, the muscle problem. Um, but the newer ones that they've developed have less of the side effects of the negative side effects. Okay. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's so, go back to but their statins have they've decreased a I mean a lot of risk factors for heart disease. But the first thing you're gonna do is a diet for six months and recheck. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, not, smart. You should not be going on. Not just any diet, but maybe a diet associated with the Pretty Muscles app. <laughs> and, That's right. And maybe the 4x4 four four diet uh, That's right. book That's actually published a... by my wife, Erin Opria, and yeah. then followed up by the Power Plate diet. Not, both not diets, but more like a way of life That's to true. eat yeah. healthy That's and correct. maybe get all of those numbers I didn't put the balance. word diet on there. I was made to put the word diet. I wanted to call it lifestyle because it is all it about learning. It is a learning. lifestyle. It I is, mean, yeah, I mean, it's forever. You... It's not a crash course. It's all about learning right. to have, live a healthy, balanced lifestyle. My publisher made me put that word on there, so that's why it's on there. But neither one of them are diets. They're all about learning to live a healthy, balanced yeah, and, lifestyle. And the bottom line is the more you put into eating healthy, what you put into your body, it's going to pay off the next 10 years. You're going to have less risk of heart disease, strokes, yeah. diabetes. I, I like talking to my clients about that. Like, 
five years from now, your yourself is going to thank you for the hard work you're putting that in now. That is so true. Like Absolutely. You, 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 need, you want to put yourself in a position to do the hard work now so that you can thank yourself for going through it instead of like, dang it, I, I wish I would have done something One thing something I want to hit on, ago. though, is uh, vitamin D. A lot of people yes. don't realize the importance of vitamin D. But vitamin D has to be with K2, right? Mm -hmm. And it also needs, you say the oil is the best, right? Mm -hmm. And what's the reason for that? Absorption's better. Because if you have like a bad gut, which a lot of us do, Mm -hmm. then it cannot break down the the pill down. Correct. Or the gel, even if it's a gel. Even a gel, you're not going to, it's going to be passed out to the stool. So if you want to get that up quickly without an injection under the tongue, because the mouth is another way of getting uh, medications into the system. Yeah, I'd do it for a drop, mm-hmm. or a couple drops underneath The mouth is like the only way. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because you take it or you can <laughs> inject. I mean, come oh, on. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> you talking about vaginal is, suppositories. Mm-hmm. We got suppositories here and there. Can I just take a pill? Can I just take a pill? Yeah. What vitamin D, what is important? It's like a carrier, basically, a transportation yeah, so, system. Right. It, you got it. That's exactly what it is. It's needed for so much of tr- transporting nutrition. Uh, key hormones to get into the cells and have them to work better. That's it. It's like the transport system to your brain, to all of your hormonal organs. So the best way to get it is, one, take a supplement. But I think the best way is to get outside and absorb some in the natural sunlight. With But you have to do it without oh, sunscreen. It so Yeah, so much of it. Though. has to be without sunscreen on, which in these winter months is really hard to do because it's freezing and we're covered up. So you're not going to absorb Especially it. Especially next week when it gets to be yeah, I know, right? <laughs> under zero, yeah. But you're, the winter is obviously harder. Yes. And that's, I think that's why a lot of people get sick at this time of year is we don't get vitamin D because we are not outside. Mm. Well, that your immune system's down. Also, we're we're um, uh, we're inside, so the germs keep spreading too. Yeah, and it's heat, so you're yeah. in the heat. All I think there's a lot of things going to it, but I do yeah. think that a lot of people's vitamin D goes down at this time of year as opposed to the summer. All right, last question: Libido changes in perimenopause and hormone replacement. I think she just wanted to know. Well, that's that's a very vague question. Let's. Do natural hormone supplements really work? Want off my hormone patches. Okay, so natural hormones. Um, this is like, a, okay, natural meaning bioidentical compound. And uh, and I heard this phrase used, a compound in pharmacy. And we had this question about compound in pharmacy on the last, last well, some of the last episode. It's like the Wild Wild West. They're not regulated. You don't know the quality of them. So a natural hormone is a compounded hormone, I think is what you're referring to. So you have to be cautious about the stability of the compounded hormone, and it's going to depend on the level of the lab. That's doing right. this, or the yeah, pharmacy. You're not going to know. Is basically you're not going to know. Yeah, you're not as a patient, you're but you're not, not no necessarily idea. against compound hormones because no, that's my my testosterone right. is a compound. It's compound hormone. And so, uh, you know, I've, I've got some, and I'll give you a plug. John Hollis, and I've got another guy, Alan. Um, uh, they're great pharmacists. They have great machinery, and y- you know, you can go into their pharmacy. I've toured their pharmacies, and I know the level of. Uh, sterility that they have. It's not a mom and pop slapping it together, putting it, putting it in, but it's not that. It's a highly sterilized environment that's very specific and compounded and tests for, and it's tested for um But for how, does, how does somebody know if theirs is good they or They don't. Bad? You're going to have to trust your doctor that they're using the, right, the right pharmacy. So in other words, have a good relationship with your doctor right. to find out. That's right. Because right. again, it's like the Wild Wild West. There's no, there's no control. You can tell the pharmacy that have a lot of um, licensing. You can, you know, and John, John Hollis in town, he's been around. He does a lot of compounding for a lot of the dermatological offices and the plastic surgeon's offices. So he has amazing pharmacy. All right. We could talk about this subject forever. Of no. course, I'm going to have you on because we have some cool ideas that we're trying to figure yeah. out how to get to you guys to the massive number. We can't talk about it today, but we do have some cool ideas. And I'm about to do a huge thing to update you guys because I know you guys are all wondering, what is our sex life like? We're not going to talk about it today, but with my testosterone and my Addy, which is, you guys are going to say, what is Addy? It is not 
Adderall. Addy is actually the name of the sex A-D-D-Y-I. drug. A-D-D-Y-I. A-D-Y-Y. Y-I. Y-I, I'm sorry. Y-I. Y-I. A-D-Y-Y-I. Y-I. Y-I. No, Y-I. A-D-D-Y-I. Y-I. Oh, good oh, Lord. Oh, geez. Right, We're right. all struggling. <laughs> and it's working actually in the brain, in the hypothalamus. Uh, the It's working in a part of the brain. Specific. But your testosterone, by having my testosterone go up, it does help make the Addy work. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll talk about it. Okay, we're going to dive into that more soon. You guys, this was really fun, and I, we'll have you back on soon Absolutely. because I know we have so much more to hit on. There is a million questions that I couldn't get to. Um, so you guys, think of your questions. Get ready. She will be back. You can also put your questions in the comments so that we can save them for yeah. the next time too. Yeah. And if you guys need to uh, have a consult, you, my office is in Franklin, Tennessee, uh, we're open to do consults, telehealth, and we'll be happy to help you or even help find somebody in your area for you. Yeah, we've had some people fly in yeah. to meet with you, and, yeah. they, and you, they've told me that you, they DM me afterwards, and they oh. said that you changed their life. It's actually been really cool. A lot of well, people have gone fun. to you. And- it's been fun seeing, you know, happy wife, happy life. It's, <laughs> you know, and, <laughs> and I just want women to know that you don't have to deal with your life changing. You address it, we fix it, and get you the best that you can be. And 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 post menopause can be better. It can actually be so better. sweet. I said forties are the best, but you know what? Cheers to forties, fifties, sixties being the new twenty, baby. That's Let's right. do it. That's right. Hey, you That's guys, right. this was awesome. We will see you next week because we're going to have lots more fun All topics. Right. And Shaki wants to great, say hi to everybody. Have a great week, Shaki. Hey, season two, safe. we're in. We're Woo. in, baby. Ha, 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 ha.